Hello, welcome to Pilot Mom. My name is Katrina and this is my son Archie who is my sidekick for the day because I need to feed him and I need to multitask to get anything done. Uh, so today we're going to be talking about turbulence, um, different kinds of turbulence, the different intensities of turbulence and we're going to start with something called mechanical turbulence. So mechanical turbulence is simply air hitting and going upwards. So it might be hitting something like pretend my coffee cup is a building. The air hits it, pushes it up, causing eddies. It also might hit side of the mountains. It might also hit, you know, trees, banks of trees and things and pushes that air up, causing those eddies. And then your plane flies through it and might get some bumps. Uh, this is more common at low levels because that's where the trees and the mountains and the um, buildings are. And especially like if you're flying out and there's a lot of buildings by the lots of buildings by the airports. On your climb out, you're gonna get some of those and on your descent and approach, you might get a little bit more of a bumpy ride. Next, let's talk about convective or thermal turbulence. So this, convective is simply the movement of a fluid vertically or up and down. And in this case, we're talking about air being that fluid. And one of the main reasons for convective turbulence is something called daytime heating. So especially on those warm summer days, that sun hits the earth heats up the earth and then the earth heats up the air above it causing bumps and these bumps are caused by updrafts and downdrafts and a note uh, by uh, Captain Doug Morris from one of his uh, weather books is that if you are in flight training becoming a pilot it's wise to actually book your flight test in the morning or in the evening when it's cooler and you don't have to deal with any kind of daytime heating bumps or convective turbulence because flight tests are stressful enough as they are. Right. So there are some cues that can help pilots predict turbulence, like certain clouds or terrain like we talked about with mechanical turbulence or warm summer days with the convective turbulence. There's one kind that's a little bit more difficult to predict and it is called clear air turbulence. Clear air turbulence is found usually over 20,000 feet, which is you know where the average airplane flies for passengers. And it's not really easily detectable by conventional radar in airplanes, so it is hard for pilots to avoid. One thing that can cause clear air turbulence is the presence of jet streams. Meteorologists can actually forecast jet streams, so they are often included in pilot weather packages or pilot weather briefings. So a jet stream is simply a narrow, fast moving current of air. And you might actually notice that if you are flying from the west to the east, it's actually faster because that's typically the way that jet streams move. And we take advantage of it in aviation by kind of sinking, setting ourselves into it and getting a nice push. Alternatively, going the other way, we're finding a headwind. So those flights going from east to west are usually a little longer. And there are certain wind patterns that are typically associated with clear air turbulence. And some of them are called sharp ridged, sharp trough off and close lows. So then we have different intensities of turbulence. We're going to start with light. So these are small erratic changes to airspeed and altitude. Then we have light chop, which is kind of just like little bumps that you feel, but not changes to altitude or airspeed. And these bumps can kind of actually feel rhythmic. Next, we have moderate turbulence, which is pretty much the same as light turbulence, just a little bit more aggressive of airspeed and altitude changes. And then we have moderate chop, which is more kind of rapid jolts, uh, but not a lot of airspeed or altitude change. And then we have severe, which are large, kind of abrupt, sudden changes to airspeed and altitude. And the plane might be doing its own thing for a sec. Now we have extreme and extreme turbulence might, might make it difficult for the pilots to control the airplane and it actually might suffer from structural damage. You want some of this? But note that extreme turbulence is incredibly, incredibly rare. Uh, in fact, according to Dr. Paul Williams, who is a professor of atmospheric science at the University of Reading, only 0.1% of the atmosphere contains the weather that would provide such severe turbulence. So chances of you ever hitting it are super rare. Go buy a lottery ticket. Mm -hmm. And Dr. Williams actually co-created the turbulence forecasting algorithm. So the guy knows, knows what he's talking about. And his efforts at the end of the day, keep all of us safe in the sky. So thank you, Dr. Williams. So the point in all of this is to wear your seatbelts. The recent Hawaiian Airlines turbulence incident, uh, 36 people were injured, three of which were flight attendants and 33 of them passengers. Um, flight attendants are 
Flight attendants are permitted to stand up and walk around while the seatbelt sign is on, unless they're directed by the pilots to sit down or they feel unsafe. So there may have been flight attendants in the aisles performing some duties, but there were 33 other people in the cabin, obviously not buckled up or sitting in their seat without their seatbelts on or walking around the cabin at that time. And I know as a passenger, it sucks when you really have to go to the bathroom and the seatbelt sign is on. And I know it sucks as a flight attendant because I did it for six years to have to remind people that the safest place for them while, their seat belt sign, while the seatbelt sign is on is fastened in their seatbelts. I said it like a broken record a million times when I was a flight attendant but 33 injuries could have been avoided if people were actually in their seats. And I know sometimes it feels like it's so smooth. Like I don't understand why the seatbelt sign is on, but maybe the plane ahead has now informed your pilots that there's a bit of a rough ride coming up. So best thing to do if that seatbelt sign is on, there might be something that you as a passenger don't know about. The pilots might know that it's getting choppy. They might turn on the seatbelt sign and the best place for you is in your seat with your seatbelt fastened anytime that you're seated. So even if the seatbelt sign is off, mm -hmm. keep it on. So make sure you keep yourself safe, keep your baby mm -hmm. safe. Always keep your seatbelt fastened. Stay safe, happy flying.